All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Leadership Locker. I have a very special guest here. Uh, we met you. I'll get to the story, but uh, she's a very special guest who's been making some great necessary waves on my favorite platform, which is LinkedIn. And uh, her name is Amy Perkins, and she's out in California. And I'm so sorry we haven't met yet in person, but and I'll give you the opportunity to introduce yourself properly in a second. But uh, I need to make sure I'm recording, which I am, and I love talking about this on a podcast because I don't really don't care. Um, this is sponsored by Rich Cardona Media, uh, the Leadership Locker is sponsored by Rich Cardona Media, which really emphasizes on the visibility that you need in order to, for your value to be realized. I know all of us have value, especially uh, us entrepreneurs out there, and you really need to have a social media presence. So when it comes to filming, editing, and distribution, Rich Cardona Media can absolutely help you. But without further ado, Amy, please uh, let us know a little bit about you and, and we'll get started here. Sure. So thank you so much, Rich, for having me on your show. And I'm so grateful we connected on LinkedIn. Yes. It was really one of my first forays into social media. My background, I was in education for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I was an elementary school teacher for nine. Mm -hmm. The rest of my career, I was in a bigger leadership role. I was a master teacher. I was a teacher trainer. I was a consultant and an educational coach. Wow. So I was not on social media for my business career job, any of that. So positioning when I quit that career in spring of 2018 and being visible online in a way that I never had before and being <laughs> a middle-aged mom, it was a shock. Mm -hmm. I guess we can kind of Yeah, start. yeah. Well, <laughs> let, me ask you, let me ask you this uh, before we... We start uh, in some of the most recent events. Uh, I, I discovered you. Well, actually, first question: What made you realize that like, I'm going to get on social media? So it was about a year after the death of my best friend from college, and that mm. was a awakening for me. And I had been on this journey, this this transformational journey of self development and self growth. And I had been learning these amazing things and reading these amazing books and just wanting to share that with others. And so I pushed through some massive fear, like massive fear. And with the help of my nine-year-old son at the time, we <laughs> uploaded a video to YouTube. Really? And I was sharing about this book, The Five Second Rule that Mel Robbins wrote. And yes. that first video I ever put online, it went kind of viral. I mean, it's mm. got 20,000 views. Wow. The first video I ever put online and I was clueless as, I don't even know how it happened. I don't <laughs> know how it happened. I don't know SEO. I don't know how to tag. I don't know any of that. But yeah. I started getting a hundred, 200, 300, 500, a thousand views. And I thought, okay, that was really scary, but I have learned all of these other things that I want to share as well. And so I started sharing on YouTube. That's unbelievable, actually. Uh, I have a YouTube channel and I'm going to just say I'm so jealous because I, I spent the time and the energy learning all that things, but I'm at the same time, obviously, very, very happy for you because that probably allowed you to kind of uh, accelerate your comfort being online because you tasted the success. So everyone, please know that she's the exception, not necessarily the rule. So keep going no matter what, if you have video content to put out there. And Amy, so you talked about the five second rule. And I know this story very well, because when we met um, online, uh, you mentioned your podcast, and I listened to it. And I'll never forget, I was in San Antonio, and I was on a run. And I listened to music on runs, not podcasts, but I listened. And you, I just felt like it was a coming out party. You know, you were just like, okay, um, not that you were unhappy doing what you were doing necessarily. I mean, I don't know, but I just felt literally like it was like, here I am, everybody. And uh, is that accurate? It is. And the things that held me back from showing up on social media, I knew I had a story that could help people. Yeah. But I didn't feel that I was that package that really would be allowed to be seen. You know, we see so much perfection. Yes. Um, in the media. And again, I'm a middle-aged mom with no plastic surgery. <laughs> um, and in my mind, again, even though I knew I had value to share, I didn't think the world wanted to hear from someone that came in the package that I was. Yeah. I've 
come to see that's exactly the package that needs to be seen. And so I want to encourage any of your listeners that know they have something to share, but they feel like they're going to get criticized for how they look or people don't want to hear from them. Like you are exactly who needs to be showing up, not the picture perfect Photoshop image of what we see. It is that imperfect yes. normal human being that has been through experiences and have a message to share with others. I, this, this is ironically complete validation for my business, which is personal branding for executives and for companies. I like to highlight the people within the companies, not the company. And it's just because people are interesting. I mean, it's really that simple. Like, like this would this definitely would be different if you were a posturing plastic surgery person you know mom who just had this perfect life in california instead it's it's messy all of our lives are messy you know i always used to say you know sometimes when i used to think my family was dysfunctional and i was around other families long enough i'm like I think every family is dysfunctional, no matter what great holiday pictures they send. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's just the truth. And I think that's what this is all about and what we're about to get uh, about to talk about is the truth is undefeated. Gary Vee always says this, but when you come out authentic, you don't have to think nearly as hard. You just speak, you storytell, you add value without even knowing it, and you help people, I like to say, avoid the potholes you've hit. So. That being said, this is the perfect time to segue into, and you, I already kind of talked about my audience uh, before we started recording, but you went on to social media, there's service members, there's veteran entrepreneurs, anyone for that matter, who's going to attempt to get on social media. Um, they should have some concerns, even though there are amazing positive byproducts. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that you've gone through recently, or not necessarily gone through, that you've witnessed and addressed. Absolutely. So again, my background's in education. I was with kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and teachers. And that's a mainly female, um, it's just a mainly female career. Yes. I didn't deal with any sexual harassment in education mm -hmm. ever. Yep. I did have male principals. They were all very professional. Um, I didn't even have harassment from dads of kids. <laughs> yeah. So here I am, I'm 47 and I show up, I wear inspirational t-shirts on videos. I am not dressed to sex it up. Um, I am all about a message. And I was getting messages on LinkedIn that really were quite shocking. Again, I am a middle-aged mom. I am not jumping around in a bikini. I am not, um, in my mind, I am, if anything, <laughs> it's all about the message. And I was inundated in the beginning. Like this was really, this is new to when you're new, I think, to social media platforms. So for me and LinkedIn, my first 48 hours, I wanted to quit. <laughs> I posted my first video about why I quit my job. And it yeah. was a real, um, it was a lack of integrity and leadership. And that's why I, I literally walked from a 25 year career. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to be my next step. And I, that was my first video. And I started getting connection requests on LinkedIn, yep. accepting them. And then these messages started rolling in. You're hot. You're sexy. Here's my number. Call me. And it was like, I wanted to throw up. <laughs> um, I was like, what am I doing wrong? I remember I wore, I had a green t-shirt on, like a baggy green t-shirt in my first video. Um, my intention was very clear, like knowing this was a business platform, how I wanted to present myself. And so I'm married, I would be, I grab my husband, I'm like, honey, what, like, what is this? And, and honestly, I, I wanted to delete my account, but, there was that little voice in my head that was saying, just keep going, just yeah. keep going. Yeah. So I didn't know about the report feature on LinkedIn at that time. Now I would have done things differently. I would have taken a deep breath and I would have reported all of these messages. But at the time it was so shocking. I just was hitting block, 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 block. And so, um, it was just nothing I had expected because I hadn't ever dealt with that in a career. And so to mm -hmm. 
even on YouTube. It was literally, I was on YouTube for eight months, I think, when I started LinkedIn. I got none of that on YouTube. Wow. Well, let me, let me probe at that a little bit. I, I empathize, but I obviously don't know necessarily what's that like, what, what that is like to, to kind of endure that. And I'm not going to pretend to know, but, but I do conceptually realize that must be extremely damaging. You came in with good intentions and then it's just like, what? And we talked about it earlier. So this is kind of the trust platform. This is especially important because this platform, as you mentioned, is a business platform. All I do, all I do is implore Marines and sailors and soldiers, like get your stuff out there on LinkedIn, take off your uniform, you know, do this. You are a subject matter expert in this area. Like this is where you make connections. This is where you can network virtually. This is where you could find your next job. This is where you can hire people if you're a business owner. And I, uh, I completely agree. Now the platform has changed and you and I could go on and on and on about some of the content that's out there, repurposed viral content. And uh, it, uh, it's not G rated. So bullshit, you know, repurposed viral content from Facebook and Instagram and people just doing it for the likes and everything else. But you and I have a really foundational understanding that this platform was meant for a reason. And that had a lot to do with your reaction. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about like your expectations of this platform? Yeah. Again, going into it, um, thinking LinkedIn is business and professional. And so it was that much more shocking because every time I post or comment or show up, it's like I'm at work. I, I treat people respectfully and I just expect that back. You know, I not showing up on match.com or Tinder or even Instagram where there's maybe more of it's social media, just what people do. So if LinkedIn wants to be that business professional platform, I think they need to step it up in alerting people to what you're going to get when you join the platform. I didn't realize, Rich, it's literally like a free-for-all, the wild, mm-hmm. wild west. People can write any bio they want. They can write any background they want. I didn't realize that. And just somebody that has morals and values and integrity, everything in my bio was absolutely true. Yeah. My I went to, my undergrad, my graduate degree, my experience. I didn't lie about one thing or embellish one thing. If anything, I've understated my experience. Yes. And so coming to a platform thinking it's business and professional and then realizing not only are you going to get comments on your appearance, you're going to run into people that have totally falsified and they're literally showing up on this platform as actors. And so I think people need to understand joining LinkedIn, you need to go in it very wary. And I'm not typically that type of a person, but for safety on all accounts, just know anybody can be anything. Yes. Let's talk about the fact that you came onto LinkedIn, you exploded in my opinion, somehow you ended up in my feed, I was intrigued, I wrote you and you're like, I, you, and, and this must, re, you, you must have just been or already endured some connection requests that you were weary of because of some of the experiences that you had. And this is the really crazy part. I was at Arlington National Cemetery uh, saying goodbye to a friend and you were like, Hey, you sent me a voice message and it was so kind, but, and it was honest. And you were like, I usually, you know, why do you want to connect? Uh, You know, I'm just not sure. Uh, Can I help you with something? And I don't remember what I said, but obviously after uh, I kind of mentioned where I was and and thanked you for just replying at all. And here's what I do. uh, We actually had a little bit of a bond because of another story, which is going to be a separate podcast that we still have to do with your friend, Fabi. But you, you were hesitant and but we connected and then i started watching your content and and amy it got just like better and better and then i just started seeing numbers now look we're not all about vanity metrics but we cannot hide from the truth which is you had a, like you rose like a phoenix you know it was absolutely crazy so now you're enduring some of these things you you kind of put them in a shell or in a drawer and you're like okay but all of a sudden you know now you have a voice like a real voice and you decided to do something uh well actually let me say ask you this 
did you feel that the, despite some of the negativity, there was a lot of positive that was coming through LinkedIn and that you were enjoying, you know, some of the people that resonated with your messages and the real connections that you were making? Absolutely. I think this is one of the most phenomenal social media tools out there for people that are serious about business and sharing expertise and experience. Absolutely. And that's why I did do what I just did last week. And let's talk about it. So what did you do? So, and this was not planned at all. (laughs) But leading up to this open letter that I wrote to the CEO of LinkedIn, I had been getting women reaching out to me and just sharing their stories and hearing more and more of women that were being harassed by men. Um, And one of the things about women, we want to be nice. And in the beginning, I would have men reaching out in messages, um, how are you? (laughs) And I, I would be like, fine. Yeah. But feeling very uneasy about responding fine, but wanting to be nice. Yes. Why, why, why do you, sorry, why do you say that? Why do you say I wanted to be nice versus what? Hesitant, reluctant? Like, what does that say about you if you were one of the latter? So now if I get, how are you or what are you doing? I'm like, block, block, like F you. Don't ask me what I'm doing. I mean, what do you want me to say? I'm getting in the shower. (laughs) I really think that's what some of these guys are fishing for. And so (laughs) if you have such low EQ that your first comment to a new connection is what are you doing? No, I don't have time. So, but me back maybe a year ago, I was confident, but not like I am now. Yes. And I didn't want people to think I wasn't nice because I am a nice person. Mm. I'm kind. Um, I don't care now if people don't think I'm nice. So at the time, if I got, how are you? And again, it's a business platform. So I look at this like, what does it have to do with business? Like, how am I? I you're not a friend. I don't know you. You're a stranger. Like you're a literal stranger. Um, uh, just to, just to interrupt for a second. I, I get that too. And it's funny because gender aside, I'm the same way. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Like if, especially if it's a connection request, I'm like, okay, we have a bunch of mutual connections. Like, uh, sure. Why not? I, I don't take the time to evaluate the connections, right? Like it's, it's an instant decision. Yes or no. And I, I, it's so funny. I accept. And then it's like, how are you? I'm like, oh no. And then I, sometimes I'll go, please don't. And then they'll write and they'll write, what do you mean? And then they'll, they'll give me their pitch. I'm like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's salesy or it's harassing or it's disingenuous yeah. or whatever. So, yes. so I just want you to let you know, gender aside, like it happens, it's, it's, it's rampant. <laughs> yeah. So, so now I don't, I either don't respond at all or I disconnect yeah. uh, and that comes with confidence, but I know rich, there are so many women hmm. because we're just like good girls, yeah. right? I mean, it's just like a society thing. And so you feel like, you have to respond. Yeah. Um, and I want to tell women and men, like you don't, period, end of story. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what a stranger thinks of you. It doesn't. And I look at it like I would never reach out to someone and say, what are you doing? And so because I wouldn't do that, I don't need to respond to that. Yep. So you wrote this letter. Yep, I did. Uh, tell me about leading up to the letter. Uh, did you... Were you like, you know what, forget it. Or uh, tell me about some of the moments in your mind of, of doubt or just complete confidence. I will. So again, this letter was not in my mind. While I had been fielding some of this harassment, really in the beginning, um, I've been hearing it from other women. I went to bed on Thursday night before I wrote the letter. And I don't know if you believe in God or anything universe. I believe in God. And I actually said a prayer before I went to bed that night. And I said, God, like use me as your vessel because everything that I share, I just want to light those sparks in people, get them thinking differently. And I did, I said that prayer. I'm like, God, use me as your vessel. Like, what do you want me to talk about? I woke up at four in the morning, bolted out of bed, like, boom, like, standing straight out of bed and this, it was go write this letter. (laughs) 
And I, in my, I'm like having this conversation with myself, like right now, really this letter, like to the CEO of LinkedIn. And it was like, yep, go. So I went downstairs. My computer was downstairs. I grabbed my journal, which I brought like mm -hmm. here. I, mm -hmm. I wrote in my journal before I wrote the letter. Yep. I, I am grateful. That's how I write in my journal. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that Jeff Weiner and Seth Godin read my article and respond. I wrote that in my journal and then I got about the business of writing the article, the letter mm -hmm. to Jeff, and it was about the sexual harassment on LinkedIn. Yes. How I think they can do better and some measures I think they could put into place to, to curtail some of this harassment and scamming. And again, it's a, it is a brand that is branded on trust and professionalism and business. And because of that, I think that this was an important topic to bring up. Yeah. yeah. Let me, let me paint the picture yeah. a little bit now. So you sent me, I think we had talked, uh, we were DMing about something and uh, you said, or, or you just responded with, with a, a link to the post uh, because obviously we're all busy and sometimes we'll do that with each other, right? Like, Hey, don't miss yeah. this post. This is a good one. So I looked yeah. at it. I saw the title. I'm like, okay. And I did not know what I was about to read. I was just kind of like, okay, cool. Like, I don't know if it was a thank you or you know what. And then I was like, whoa. And then I go back and I see this thing has legs. This thing is about to go viral. Um, and I knew that number one, that you made a fantastic decision that is consistent with your courage and your integrity and that it was something that needed to be said. It wasn't just like, I just want to hear myself talk. It was something that needed to be said, especially, and you just literally validated it by telling, telling everyone that you were getting messages about it uh, before you even thought to write it. So we arrived there. You have it, you put it out into the world and tell me about the responses, both the positive and the negative that you received. Well, and again, Rich, like my intention was only for the CEO, like that I wrote for him. Yeah. And he read it. And the responses were interesting because it's so crazy to think that a topic like let's not sexually harass and let's not scam on LinkedIn mm -hmm. be one iota controversial. I had some of LinkedIn's beloved top 100 podcast hosts tell me, this is how it is on social media. Why are you talking about this? Mm. Young men. And, you know, it says so much about our culture. I am a firm believer that every voice matter, that one voice can make a difference. And to tell a woman, why are you talking about this? Basically, like, just shut up and go away. Correct. And I've been told on LinkedIn by men, shut up, kill yourself, you're a bimbo. I have been told so many things mm -hmm. beyond sexual harassment, just like vile, hostile harassment. And it just breaks my heart because I really believe, like, we are all good souls. And mm -hmm our experiences in this world just lead us on these different paths. Yeah. But I think regardless, I'm not going to change the entire platform and I'm not crazy enough to think I can, but I do think that everybody that has a voice, we are, we need to use them. Yep. And if everybody just thinks I can't make a difference, nothing's ever going to change in the world. So you it's really interesting. I saw on some of the, what I would consider negative uh, comments, you wrote, your opinion matters. Yeah. Tell me what that's all about. You know, um, when I first joined the platform and had less connections and followers or whatever engagement, I was getting a lot more negative feedback. And I think, I don't know why I would talk about topics like intuition or, you can't buy happiness with money. And the feedback was startling and shocking. And someone came along and actually said, hey, here's what I write. Because I was trying to, I came at it like trying to explain myself. Like, yeah. oh, like I'm a good person. Like, here's really what I meant. Well, now, like the way someone reacts, I'm just a mirror. And it's a reflection that some people don't want to see whatever I say. And if you're going to get triggered by a stranger online, that says a lot about you and isn't anything about me. Yeah. 
And this really like intelligent man one time said, hey, here's what I write. When people take my message the wrong way or just to, just to let them be heard. They just want to be heard. And he said, I write your opinion matters because yeah. it everybody's opinion matters. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's kind of my blanket. I hear you. I see you. Your opinion matters, but it's not going to change my stance. Yeah. Uh, this, it, it's not an apples to apples uh, analogy, but when I, I, I used to have a thing when people said, thank you for your service. And my wife would always say, oh, just it's easy. I'm like, I don't know what to say. And I'd get so just weird about it. And then I'd actually get critical. Sometimes I was just like, I didn't know what to say. And she's like, just say thanks for your support. And I was like, what? And now it's like my go-to, like, I never yeah. feel bad about it. I don't, I don't take the extra time to consider, did they actually mean, I don't, I don't overanalyze it. But anyway, I, I think that was a perfect, uh, and a response. And it didn't, what it also didn't do was pull you into some unreal crazy exchange that could potentially make you vulnerable and, and just completely lose fact of the message, which is exactly what that person probably intended to do. So, so that being said, um, you, the CEO wrote back, uh, and can you tell me what happened in the aftermath? And then, um, and then, yeah, we'll hit one more topic and then we'll be done. Yeah. It was really, honestly, it was terrifying to write that letter and put that out yeah. there. Um, really terrifying, but he responded and I knew I just felt this peace because I knew I was going to be safe. Like I was actually kind of scared, um, mm. safety because I had heard all of this behind the scenes rumblings of, you don't talk about scamming. You don't talk about this stuff. Um, people will get you blocked and yep, I've heard it. Well, you know, I'm not about naming names, but I absolutely speak my truth. And I've shared different circumstances, like scammers coming after me and experiences that I've had in pods. Um, my one, one experience when I was new to the platform and didn't know any better. Yep. And I think speaking truth, like when, when you vibrate in truth, there's like truth and love. And then there's guilt, shame, and fear. Mm -hmm. When you speak truth, you are untouchable because there's nothing anybody that can say, there's nothing they can throw at you that can take you off of your truth. I look at it like 10 plus 10 is 20 and everything I speak is my truth. And so it doesn't matter what people are going to throw at me, the positive, the negative, the positive or the negative mm -hmm. I've spoken is still my truth. Yes. So I did feel really safe when he responded because I knew his comment was going to make this very visible and that I was going to be safe. And yeah. um, about an hour later, I was on the phone with someone at corporate for LinkedIn. Amazing. It was a very emotional call. I mm -hmm. probably cried four times. <laughs> all of the stories that women have shared with me, all of the stuff I've experienced, you know, not having experienced it in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I had two minor brushes, well, not minor, big brushes with sexual harassment, but I was 19 and it was two different jobs that I ended up quitting. I yep. walked, yep. I had two um, different situations. And, but my whole 25 years, I didn't deal with it. So it was very, I was bombarded and um, I wanted to speak about it and I yep. wanted to get some changes made on LinkedIn. I don't know why a man can't just be after mm -hmm. one or two reports of pretty gross stuff. Mm -hmm. Why just have your account wiped? I mean, yeah. yeah, there's freedom of speech, but this is a, this is a platform that's for business. Yep. And I don't know that you have the freedom to tell someone to kill themselves. I don't know that you should have the freedom to call someone a bimbo. Yeah. You should have the freedom to tell a woman that you pick her to have sex with. I just don't know why we should have those freedoms professional business platform. Yeah. And I want to say, and, and I mentioned this before the call about the audience that, you know, I know female service members, I've worked with many female service members, and there's a lot of things that go on in the military that some people would think never goes on. And when you're in it, you see a lot of the bad things that go on and there's endless stories and everyone's experiences are different. But the important thing is, and I would tell you that everything that you're saying, if I was listening to this podcast and this was me a few years ago, I might not have the EQ to be like, it's probably, I, I might be like, it's not that bad. Like she's, she's exaggerating. Like I, I promise you, and this is, this is me just being truthful. Like I might have reacted differently, but 
I get it now. I'm on it. I, I see the platform. You know, I've 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 had relationships and friendships with people who've endured things, and now it just it doesn't make you shy away, and it doesn't mean that you don't need to listen or avert your eyes, but just just have some empathy and like listen. And you stro- struck me as someone who especially after listening to your podcast and the conversations we've had that is just trying to do the right thing. So for anyone listening, uh, you know, whether you're, you know, post service in service or you're in Amy shoes and you've never served or whatever it may be. Um, this is frowned upon. It's not completely abnormal and you have a decision to make and you can be an action taker, which is fundamentally one of your principles is to just be an action taker. So I'm not surprised, Amy, when you're like, it's 4am and I got up and then I just did it. Like, that's exactly what you do. So you got up and you did it. And then all of a sudden the CEO, which kudos to them. Uh, I think it's phenomenal that they responded quickly and swiftly and they, you know, wanted to hear you out and, and explore more. So all that being said, thank you for that. I would love to finish on, um, uh, you telling us about some of the things that you have going on, some of the actions that you've been taking in your uh, entrepreneurial journey and your post, you know, education career and some of the people you've teamed up with and uh, what we could learn more and how we could support you. So one of my main messages is to take action, take consistent action every single day. And that ordinary people, ordinary people like me, a middle-aged mom of two, a former elementary school teacher can do extraordinary things. In the last year and a half since I walked from my career because of bad leadership, I am now launching my own wine label. It is <laughs> every gal, it is bottled to inspire. I had a thought last spring and I turned it into a thing just by taking consistent action. Yes. Letting myself dream bigger than I ever thought possible. I am now. I took my coaching expertise, those 17 years of coaching. I was formally trained in cognitive coaching. I trained wow. hundreds and hundreds of individuals, thousands of hours of coaching, hundreds of hours of training. And I have taken that and morphed it into business coaching and leadership consulting. I have a multiple seven figure pediatric dentist that I've worked with for a year, transformed the entire culture at her office. I have female CEOs that I work with one on very few, but that's certain. If, if the right person comes along, I will yeah. work with them. Yeah. I'm teaching vision board master classes to groups and doing keynotes. I, I, what I want people to know is that regardless of your background, your experience, your expertise can be transferred. And that's why for all of your men and women in service, coming out of it, going into a new realm, a new area of business, you have to really hone in on your gifts. We all have them and your experience and what lights you up and do the work, dig in, know that you have transferable skills know that things that come naturally to you might not come naturally to other people and figure out how you can use those gifts and give them to the world and in turn get paid to share them. I love that. I have to uh, focus on one thing you said, your expertise. I believe there is just, I mean, I'll put it to you this way. I saw an article this morning and it was about content marketing from a very, very well-known publication and their advisory council. And I'm like, who are these people? I'm like, I say all these things to my clients. These 12 things are literally what I preach to my client. I am a year and almost a half into this business. And I have, you know, just thrust myself into practicing, you know, being a practitioner of everything that I do, helping my clients become visible. And you said your expertise. Do not let other people be the, per, the, the, the deciding factor on whether you are an expert or not. Uh, you, just because you're getting out of the military, or if you're just transitioning from real estate to, I have no idea, uh, physical training or something along those lines, you decide whether you're the expert because you are the expert of you. Yep. Only you know these things the way you do, how you know them, and, and 
how they work. And it does, I mean, literally, you and I could probably talk to the same person and someone's going to lean way heavy to the other person and we could be spitting out the same information, but it's the story behind it and the experiences behind it that could be the deciding factor. To, and, and, you know, and that's not a derogatory thing. It's just the way it is. So don't let other people be the deciding factor, please, on whether you're an expert or not. So I love that you said your expertise because it is unique to each individual. Yes, and everybody has something amazing to offer to the world. It's just those of us that are daring to dream big enough and execute. Take consistent action. Mm -hmm. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let the opinion of others hold you back. I almost never put my first video up because I was scared about what people would say about how I looked. I was scared they would talk about who were you to show up. Well, my message to everyone listening, like, why not you? Yeah. Like yourself. Nobody's going to pick you. Nobody's going to pluck you up and say, you are the one that needs to do this. You have to pick you. I have been doing amazing things because I believed I could. I mm. podcast from idea to iTunes in eight weeks. <laughs> I am challenged. Yes. I mean, anything is possible when yep. you dare to believe that you can do it. I love it. In closing, can you please tell us uh, where we can find you? Uh, so that way we could say hello, uh, look at your content or potentially work with you. Absolutely. So my podcast is on all platforms. It's called Keys to Courage. I'm on LinkedIn. If you want to connect with me, just, just shoot a private message. Say, hey, I heard you on Rich's podcast. I'd yeah. be happy to connect with you. I am, my website's Keys to Courage, and I'm on Instagram at Keys to Courage. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and we still have uh, some work to do uh, in connecting you, Fabi, and I, and that is a long time coming, and I can't wait for the time that it happens, but uh, for everyone listening, Amy is a furious action taker. I absolutely remember when she mentioned the wine label, and I think you sent me like a picture or a prototype. I'm like, what is she doing here I am just trying to like get another client and she's doing all this and I'm like okay and she's one of the people that I don't want to just say inspires but uh propels me to try and do more and realize like there's always uh you know when you cut all the nonsense you can just surge and I love to surge and I don't like to stop so thank you uh for being an inspiration Amy thank you for being on the podcast and we will all see you soon thank you